Hey guys, I thought it'd be fun to explore the differences between the Bosch PowerPack series. It's almost 2018, we're just starting to see the power tube here in North America, and I've got three different Bulls electric bikes, each with a different battery design just lined up here for you, as well as batteries that have been taken off some of the other models. So from the left, we have the new Power Tube 500. 500 designates watt hours, roughly, that are in this 36 volt, 13.4 amp hours. Same capacity as the Power Pack 500, but the Power Pack connects to the top of the down tube on bikes versus the power tube, which can be built right into that down tube for a really beautiful, stealthy look. And this is an electric mountain bike. And a lot of times it's like, okay, how can we get the weight even lower? How can we make this look cool and protect that battery and maybe create some room for a bottle, which you can see here with that monkey link. That's where the power tube comes in. It's a neat option, but it does cost more and it actually weighs more. It's one of the heaviest battery designs out there if and depending on how they create like this casing. And in this case, it's an aluminum alloy casing that matches the frame in terms of paint and also just the, the thickness. It, you know, weight is another topic. Uh, and then how here we have the rear rack battery. Okay, so three different styles. And there are actually two versions of the power pack. This is power pack 400, and that's 36 volt, 11 amp hour. You might find that on some of the more affordable electric bikes or just a city bike, something that's using the Bosch active line motors, kind of the, the lower power motors, but it looks just like this and they're backwards compatible. So the interface on the bike can handle the power pack 400 or the power pack 500. And I love that it's got this integrated handle on top. It's uh, actually kind of neat that they all use the same battery charger. And we're looking at the high power battery par charger here. This is four amp output, 1.7 pounds, relatively compact. It's just nice. There's no extra dongles or anything like that. And it could charge any of your batteries. So great job, Bosch. They're thinking ahead. It's the kind of thing where you buy a bike and there's gonna be a battery for you into the future if you have a power pack. And even if you have to ship your bike somewhere, maybe you can't ship the battery because these are high capacity lithium ion you could get somewhere and they're probably gonna have a power pack somewhere that you can borrow 400 or 500. The power tube by contrast is a little bit more fancy. And you know, as we saw on the mountain bike a minute ago, you know, I, I just don't know if it's gonna be as easy to, to adapt an existing power tube design. I haven't spent enough time with this. This is a dummy battery, so it doesn't actually have cells in it, but this is just the power tube off the bike, no shielding. And again, the, the shielding can't be disconnected from the bike. so. Let's talk about weight a little bit. The Power Pack 400, not pictured here, but again, it looks just like this. That's the lightest weight one. It's about 5.4 pounds. Well, when you jump up from 400 watt hours to 500 watt hours, it goes from you know 5.4 to 5.7, maybe 5.8. I've weighed a bunch of these and it's, it's right in there. You know, that's not bad. And again, the weight's pretty low, pretty center, good for, I, I don't know, you know handling, right? You, you think about weight distribution, you want that low end center. And then we have the Power Pack 500 rear rack battery, and that's six pounds. They also have a 400 watt hour of this, but six pounds, it's slightly heavier, and I'm not sure exactly why. Maybe it's just the extra, the plastic and stuff and the interface. Um, and you're putting that weight up high and towards the rear, which is not ideal from a handling perspective, but it does create this nice step through design. And for a lot of people, being able to approach the frame and step over easily is a bigger win than, um, you know, ha having, a battery there and having to swing their leg and maybe they're sensitive in, in the hip or the knees. So that's why you see this sometimes. And a lot of times the battery's covered up because you got some panniers or bags or something. But you have to be careful because if you put too much weight towards the rear of the bike and then you have a relaxed fork that's raked out like this, you can end up with a little bit of speed wobble, especially if there's some frame flex going on. And these step-through designs, the waves, they, they don't tend to be quite as stiff as like a, a diamond or a mixty mid-step. So that's talking a little bit about applications. We talked about weight. We've talked about when might you want one or another. We've talked about traveling around. We talked about the charger, how it works with all of them. There is one more charger and it's a two amp charger versus four amp. Not gonna charge quite as quickly. That weighs about one pound and it's just a little bit more compact. So it's like a travel charger. And some bikes come with that one. Someone, some bikes come with the, the four amp. It sort of depends on which bike and which company. Um, but that's something I try to record on all my different reviews. I think that's a, a pretty good roundup. I welcome your questions. It's exciting to see different batteries hitting the market. And then just, again, thinking about, well, why wouldn't they put the power tube on this bike? It's kind of sporty. And again, it's a kid's bike here, actually, with 24-inch wheels. I think it's because they wanted to save money. 
so the, the power pack's cheaper. And maybe they didn't even have enough room in this down tube because it's such a shorter frame, right? So things like that. There are a lot of decisions that go into this. I'm definitely excited about the power tube. It's sexy, but for the price, uh, you know, is it worth it? What's your application? For a bike like this, yeah, I mean, it's it's very cool. And it interfaces with the same Bosch Active, Active Line Plus, Performance, Performance Line CX, like we have here. This is the high torque version. So all the motors seem to be able to interface with any of these batteries, depending on the bike design and stuff. And they're all 36 volts. So yeah, the other thing that I wish I could show you here, but I don't have the key is when you unlock this down to battery on the other side, there's a locking core. It kind of pops out slightly and then you press a button and then it pops the rest of the way. So it does seem very secure. That's something Bosch has done a good job at. There are a couple other designs out there um, where, you know, the battery kind of clunks down a little bit and it's kind of heavy, you know, six pounds or whatever. Some of those batteries are seven pounds and it's it feels a little unstable. So I like that it's a two-step system and then it, it angles out from the top versus the bottom. So great job on this. As far as the slide out rear rack battery, it does have a handle on the back, so it's pretty easy to pull out and then hold. All of these batteries, the, the power packs that are a little bit older, not the power tube, they, they have this handle design that just makes it a little bit easier and safer to carry around. You don't want to drop your battery, avoid extreme heat and extreme cold. If you're going to store it for a long time, store it in kind of a neutral, cool environment that's dry, and that's going to help it last the longest. And then we come over to the power pack. You might have already seen this in action, but I do have the key. A lot of times Bosch uses, um, you know, some of these companies, they go with the, the ABIS keys. They have this special code where you can match a lock to it. So you could have a lock and your bike lock both using the same key. You don't have a lot of clutter, so I just unlocked it. And then notice how it kind of comes up and it could clink into the frame a little bit right there. There are other companies out there that have a side mounting battery, so it slides out and that allows you to have a lower top tube um, that's not what Bosch has done. So there we go. There's there's the power pack just like the one we have on the ground. It's got that loop for safe carrying. It's got an LED charge level indicator on the side so you can see how full it is even if it's not on the bike. Pretty good stuff. And then whenever I put these back on, I, I like to really make sure it's kind of seated correctly and then listen for the pop. There we go. Make sure it's locked in because they are kind of expensive. I think a replacement power pack 500 is like... 800, 900 bucks. Hey guys, I didn't want to leave you hanging, so we're back in the garage. I found the key, and again, here's the dummy battery. This weighs 6.15 pounds. I, I guess based on their measurements, it's a dummy battery, so I couldn't weigh it, but that's that's kind of on par with what I expect because the Power Pack 500 weighs, you know, 5.7, 5.8. But then when you put that aluminum plating, at least with the Bulls design, it ends up being 7.3 pounds. So it's it's significantly heavier, um, kind of, you know, like a, a pound heavier. The key is inserted. We're going to turn it. There we go. And normally I'd be down here watching it really closely because you don't want the battery to tumble out. But the Bosch design here has an extra little button. And it's kind of interesting because the buttons, it's pretty small. And, you you know, if you imagine having gloves on if you're riding a mountain bike you'd have to, to reach in here a little bit you press the button and then it, it tips the rest of the way out and again i like how it tips out this way versus at the bottom it will pull it out oh yeah and now you can see the metal see how thick it is on the sides that's where all the weight's coming from yeah interesting right there we go and then it, this one actually has uh, the plug built into the bottom and then this little power level indicator. I don't quite know how that works. Like, I don't know where the button is to activate it and to see how full it is, but that's where, that's where it should be. And there's a little, there's the other end, the plating. I'm gonna go ahead and set it in. There we go. Maybe I'm upside down. Yeah, there's the, I'm just gonna go ahead and set it in like this. And then click it up. There we go, and it clicks in, and it's really solid. So yeah, I like the design. So there you go, I hope that helps you out, whether you're deciding on which design to get or maybe which design you have and just learning a little bit more. I welcome feedback and questions in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. And then of course in the forum, maybe other people can chime in and help you out a little bit. Have fun out there, and as always, ride safe.